Voice, it's how we communicate. It's faster than a keyboard, easier than a swipe, no touch interface required. Voice is not a QR code. Voice is not some technology that's a sizzle in the pan that'll go away in a couple months. It's here and it's here to stay. The adoption rate is faster than an iPhone. When's the last time somebody said that? Amazon's Echo arrived in 2015 and as of September has sold 20 million units. Google has sold around 7 million home devices. In early 2017, Voice Labs, an analytic company, predicted there would be a total device footprint of 33 million. So how can brands operate in this fast-growing voice ecosystem? Brands really need to be fixated on long-term strategies, and that's what's absolutely critical. Building brands now in a voice-driven world for later looks very, very different in terms of how you do that than how brands are doing it right now. Brands need to be a step ahead of consumers and competitors. 57% of voice users have bought an item just by asking for it. Batteries, diapers, laundry detergent are all generic in terms of commerce, so brands will need to be first in line to stay ahead. What are the conversational things that are happening around your brand and how can you build an ecosystem that has authority around it? If I'm Campbell's as an example, and rather than just owning words like soup, fine, wouldn't it be better to actually own the conversations around soup, dinner, how do you feed picky toddlers, casseroles, etc.? Because that's the way that people are actually talking about your brand. To win the battle at home, brands need to learn how to better interface with their consumers. They need to ingrain themselves in their vocabulary. Everybody knows when you go in to order um, a coffee, what a venti size is, or what a grande size is, or tall. But that same hierarchy doesn't exist when you think about a brand like Hellman's. People don't understand the difference between a 28 ounce jar of Hellman's versus a 22 ounce jar of Hellman's and which one you actually need because you can't visualize that size. So it's great right now while you can't really monetize the space for brands to be thinking about how to build their language hierarchy so when that it does become a monetized space, people understand how to engage with their brand. The privacy issues along with the inability to tell between two distinct voices, it's a problem. In a more long-term way, I'm really curious of where this sort of arms race will go on the sort of assistant front. You know, to the consumer, do you really care who you're talking to? And, uh, you know, I think you see the sensibility in mobile a lot. Even though you're on, whether you're on an Apple or an Android, you have apps that are by Google on both. You have various things that are on both platforms. And you just, as a consumer, you just want what you want. And whoever's best suited to do that will do it.